Hey guys, welcome back. This week we're going to take a look inside a box of this big heavy box, 16th scale M5A1 Stewart, the um, light tank, the late version from Classy Hobby. This box weighs like six pounds. It's absolutely chock full of plastic and it's a um, really cool looking kit. So let's go ahead and take a look inside. Alrighty, so today we're going to look inside a box of this beautiful guy, which is the M5A1 Stewart by Classy Hobby in 16th scale. So it's going to be a pretty big guy. Now, full disclosure, I just recorded this, spent 20, 25 minutes recording and I realized I didn't hit play on the um, camera. So I'm doing this for a second time around. So I'm not going to show you inside the box because it's all been taken out and um, yeah, I've gone through it already. So this is the second time. So, right, so two versions of this guy. Um, these were late production, early production. Late production came out a couple years ago, which this one is. I really kind of like this one better because it has the um, hedgerow trimmer kind of blade thing on the front. Um, it's not on the picture here, but it comes in the kit, which I kind of like. With early production, you don't have that, I believe. So I went for this one. Um, looks a really cool kit. It's the box is pretty big. Um, you see it doesn't really fit on the camera. And when it is full of plastic, it weighs about six pounds. So there's a lot of stuff in here. Um, one sixteenth scale, but as I mentioned with the other tanklet kind of thing I did recently, the um, Tacom kit. This guy isn't, it's a light tank, it's not huge. So, you know, it's only gonna be about uh, yay big. It's not gonna be massive, which is kind of nice, but it still has bigger parts. So, as I mentioned last time, if you've got somebody who has like maybe eyesight issues or dexterity issues, that kind of stuff, these 16 scale kits can be a good option because the parts aren't super tiny and fiddly. Go around the box here. Again, you can see a couple of pictures. That's that hedgerow trimmer guy thing I mentioned, which can really kind of weather up and beat up nicely. Um, You'll see too, it's what's kind of nice, it just has a nice detail inside the turret here. So you can have the hatches open actually see inside it, which is kind of cool, especially in this scale. What's kind of cool about this kit too is it's not overly complicated, as we see when we go through the instructions and kit. Um, there are some detailed parts, but it's not over-engineered or anything like that. It's, it looks pretty nicely kind of built. It's a photo etch and some decals, not much in the way decals, as in all armor, you know, just got a few stars and license numbers and stuff like that. Cool, so that's the, um, the box lid. So inside the box lid, you do get a white box, which I'm not gonna show you, because again, I've already done this review, so I'm doing it a second time, but you open the white box up, and um, inside you have all the sprues. So, looking along here, first you see the color callouts. Um, so it's important to take option one or two, because you've got slight nuances between the two builds. So, number one here, from Germany, May 45. Um, you can notice the front here, how it looks. And on the, look at option two, it's open, it doesn't have that kind of skirt kind of over the front here. Um, this is um, Belgian 44. Now I'm going with option one, just purely based upon, this, this has more decals, um, has on the front, some on the front and the back, a little bit more visual appeal, whereas this one's less stuff going on here, it's more plain. So option one is what I'm going for when I build this. And here are the instructions. So instructions are actually quite nicely laid out. Um, not many parts, for the, for the amount of plastic in this kit, there's only 28 sections, um, so it's not, Tons of stuff, as I mentioned, it's pretty straightforward. Um, you go through here and you look at the parts and you think, oh, there's not many sprues, but when you notice, okay, 18 of those, nine of those, um, F, we have a couple of those. There's a lot of kind of duplicate sprues in this, so it really kind of adds up. There's a lot of um, plastic. Um, yeah, uh, 36, 40, there's probably 50 sprues in here. All right, so as always, I'll flip through this real quick. If you want to see more detail, you can just pause it or just go scale mates and download instructions and look yourself on a PDF. Um, so basically start as always in armor, you start on the wheels pretty much. Um, so working the wheels and the bogies. And going through here and on again through parts three, same work on the wheels and getting them on the side. Four, you're working on adding these to the back of the vents and um, some photo etch coming into play there. Then we're working on like the fan belts and some fans, which you're gonna see behind some photo etch grills, I believe, which go in the main kind of hole here. Again, adding the, the wheels. Onto eight, looks like adding some, um, some various kind of grills and detail to the um, hole. Here you have your um, 50 cal, tending to paint and gun metal. There's actually three 50 cals in this kit. Then going on here, this is the part where I mentioned you have to kind of select if you want to do option one or two. Um, take note here, so if you're going to do option one, you can use E and F. 
you can do D and C, the open version, if you can do option two. So again, you decide that. Plenty of stuff to drill here. There's tons of holes. What? One, two, three, four, eight, six, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, fourteen holes you need to drill. So make sure you remember to drill those out. And again, working through some detail. Nice again, 16th scale the tools, really nice size to kind of paint and weather. Optional parts, again, this is that bit I talked about, that hedgerow trimmer guy thing, which I think adds like a pretty cool kind of look to this tank, which I'll definitely be adding. And then go through adding some lights and work some hatches and bits and bobs there. And onto 15, same. Some little photo etch parts going on. And again, tiny paint, like something steel. Um, again, small parts going on to the main top, upper hole in the front. And it looks like we have some kind of jack tool that goes on there. And coming on, 18, more photo etch. Looks like we have to bend this one around to get it on there. And um, yeah, once this guy goes in the back of the hole. And another 50 cal. You see how it builds up. We got the ammo can separately with the um, ammo belt and it goes onto the main gun. Then here's the actual kind of um, the main, I say main gun, that's the uh, 50 cal. Natural main gun or cannon, whatever you want to call it on this guy is um, here. Builds up, looks like it is a one piece slide molded barrel, which is pretty awesome. No seam lines. And again, a lot of detail. And you can see this detail because you can see inside the turret as we'll see in a minute. So it's gonna look really cool once it's built up. Again, more detail going on, a couple of chairs. Again, you can see all this stuff inside. And some various kind of bits and bobs to go around the edge of the turret. Again, you're gonna see all this, so like some radios and different types of equipment and um, that kind of stuff. 24 again, and some more radio equipment into here. And 25, and some tiny little details on top of the, um, the turret. And then kind of putting it all together in 26. And 27, we're adding the tracks around the edge. Finally, 28 is a very big step. Um, looks like you're adding the top kind of panel onto the turret here. And this is what I mentioned when you can kind of open. So you have to flip that bad boy back, but you can actually see inside that detail you're gonna put in there, which is gonna look really awesome. And then you're adding it to the main, um, let's say fuselage, but main hull of the tank. And, um, and in tracks. Now, when I first looked for this, I thought, man, this doesn't show you how to do tracks. Normally that's early on. So I flicked through this a couple of times and realized, oh, you know what? Buried in section 28, right here. It's just this tiny little bit. It's about all the tracks. So basically it's four pieces. You got upper, lower, uh, actually four, five pieces. You got like some track links. You got an upper, upper and lower piece and a couple of guide horns on each, um, 65 per set. And they go on like that. It should be workable too, hopefully. Um, saying. T2 and 3 do not cement, so Q1 and 2, 2, 3, okay. So we'll see how that goes when you build it. It looks like maybe they clip together, but I'm guessing you have to kind of glue it onto the, hmm. oh, we'll see how that works, I guess, unless, oh, you, unless the guide horns hold all together, but yeah, not sure about that one, but that's, again, that's all you have for the track, just a little, little, little image right here. So that's that done, um, we get the photo etch. Here you go, looks pretty decent, just a few like grills and whatnots, and the decals behind it. I don't need to open those because they're just a couple of white stars and a few you know, numbers and stuff. That is it. So now plastic wise, um, let me bring this guy in and you can see the actual size of it. Now it comes like this in the box, um, all this crammed in. The box is actually chock a block, so you got, you got to really kind of figure out how, if we take out the box, you got to figure out how it goes and get it back in again, so it's not going to fit otherwise. So let's first look at the um, upper part of the hole. And it's like kind of textured. You see nice weld seams. We're just going to take out a wash really, take a look, take a wash really well, and it's going to look really nice, I think. Nice kind of detail again. Raised kind of bolts. got the turret. Again, this is just a light tank, so it's not going to be massive. So that guy's going to sit in like that. You can see some of the detail. The weld seams. Looking really cool. And a little hole. Again, really nicely detailed. 
some of these large parts do have some kind of imperfections where it's like they sanded the mold and sanded the plastic and stuff. And it's no big deal. This isn't a showroom car. This is a bit of armor, so just all adds to the character of it, I guess. Uh, again, some really nice weld seams all around. Very cool. And then if I kind of kind of loosely kind of place how this is all gonna go, ish, you kind of get an idea of the true size of this thing. So yeah, see it's big, but it's not absolutely massive. I don't think it's um, footprint wise. You've got the shelf. It's not. I don't think it's all that much bigger, like a 35th scale Abrams. You know. So if looking at this, it's um, on mat. It's about 10 inches long and about five and a half inches wide. As it sits like this, not but obviously it's very chunky. It's gonna look really cool. So I'm gonna paint mine, obviously olive drab. Got the other, just picked, same time I picked up a 23 mil of XF62, which I think is gonna be more than enough once it's thin to do the whole thing. And then my game plan is just to paint the whole thing olive drab and then come back in and, um, you know, kind of color modulation to break this up so it doesn't look like a toy is the main thing. Not sure how I'm gonna wear it yet, but that's kind of my game plan for the paint. So I got that out and this piece, piece here, which goes in the back, I believe. I don't know, it sits in the back somewhere like that, but got this piece. Again, nicely molded. And inside this, you're gonna have the clear parts, which look good. Some nice kind of detail molded in. Just a few like vision ports and a couple of bits right there. Okay. Okay, and then this is where we get tons of screws the same. So these are your pins for the tracks. Get nicely detailed, focus. Not only get them all out, but you have a ton of whole bag full in there. I'm pretty sure it's the whole bag full in the box as well. So and then I'm, now I'm gonna try and kind of piece this back together so I can put this back in the box later. It goes something like. That. Okay. Then running through the screws, dropping everything. Um, again, I, I did this review already, so all the bags are open already, so you have to spare you the crinkling noise. But um, nice details. So here's like the radios. See how I mean? We're going to turret be nice detail. Shovel again, really good size. You know these tools. Uh, all these tools here are really good to like you know really get against like paint detail, detail painting, or whatever, and that kind of stuff. And there are some small parts, but they're not super tiny. You know, I think this is really manageable again for people who you know maybe some eyesight issues or um issues with dexterity okay so that's that sprue nice and crisp no problems at all okay let's over so we get a lot of we have four of these sprues so i don't show you all of them but this is um x sprue f i think it is l sprue l again you can see the detail Okay, this bag we have the sprockets and wheels. Again, really nicely detailed. One thing I looked at this before I noticed is the text has it's engraved. I don't know if you can pick out the camera, but it says military mm, 20 by 6 by 10, I think it says. It's so small I can't quite read it in my eyesight, but there's your wheels. Again, all this raised detail here is going to pick out a wash beautifully. So you've got a whole bag of this stuff going on. And these must be your sides. Nice and crisp, no flash. There's injection pins all over, but on the inside, so it doesn't matter. Um, some of these are a little bit raised. You might need to take care of they fit somewhere. You might need to sand them down. Um, some bits that might need to be kind of flicking off with your finger, just ex excess. But overall, I think they're out of the way, so you don't need to worry about a lot of this stuff. All right, now more bags of the same. So we've got this is two bags of these. We've got tons of these guys. So I'll show you one of the sprues, obviously, and you see them all. They're all the same. Um, so I got this. Again, really nicely detailed. No problem at all. Tons of those. Two whole bags, although we'll exactly the same. Here's your track links. Or track pads, should I say. 
Again, nicely detailed. Again, you got a whole bag of those. All right, um, we looked at these already. Two, so we looked at these earlier. So two more of these. So there's four of these screws. Oop. Here's your um, 50 cal. Three of these. One piece molded, which is really nice. You got the ammo can again with some text printed on. Uh, ooh, I can't even quite read that. I need to look a little closer. But there's ammo belt, and then you got the three pieces for me up the can. Oop. There's no seam lines or anything to take care of, which is super awesome. Okay, another bag of track parts. Looks like your um, guide horns. And a whole bunch of those. Okay, now we're into um, bigger pieces. This is a hedgerow trimmer I keep talking about. Um, goes in the front. There's a big front in the back of the hole. Again, see the detail. Okay, you're almost there. No, that, this is the inside of the um, the turret, I think, and then the top, top of the um, turret. Again, this is open, so you can see a lot inside through it here. Um, here's your main kind of cannon of gun. Again, I'm not an armor guy, so excuse my vocabulary and lack of it. Again, nice detail. You see the switches and buttons and stuff, which can be picked out really nicely. Again, you can see all this, which is really nice in this detail. Unless you can close it up, that is. Again, no problem at all. Okay, down to final two sprues. Now these are the same again. Again, there's tons of matched sprues on this, so these two are the same. Um, so I just need to show you one of them. So you got this giant guy right here. Um, he's got some nice fan blades. You can see the detail on there. Fan belt. There you go. You get two of those, and that is it. There is a lot of plastic in this kit. I mean. I got a mountain of plastic on my desk here. Um, the box is absolutely chock a pack full. Um, I don't know if I can get all the stuff back in again. There's tons of parts. I wasn't expecting it. Um, now these classy hobby kits, this, I say this one's been around a couple of years. It's about thirty dollars more now than it was two years ago. So they are definitely getting more expensive. And it's not just classy hobby, but I know it's the hobby boss trumpeter. A lot of the thirty, sorry, not thirty second, a lot of sixteenth scale tanks, should I say, are. Um, going up in price quite a lot last year or so. They're, the prices have gone almost you know, through the roof. They're getting really expensive, these kits. Um, if you do see one of these, these Classy Hobby isn't a, a big brand manufacturer, so if you do see them and you want one, I recommend you snap it up, especially, like I mentioned, the price is going up. Um, get it in your stash so you're good to go. Um, again, they do a late and an early version. I did like the late one. Um, the early version has some cool markings, but late one for me, I just like that. The look with the um, that hedgerow trimmer thing on the front, I think it looks a little bit more meaner. Um, and I agree, kind of prefer this one, but I think essentially the kits are pretty much the same. Um, tons, tons of plastic, as I mentioned, lots of pieces, but I think it's this 16th scale, you know, it's going to be really cool to get in there and super detail this thing, and um, again, especially if you can see it as well, it's going to be worthwhile. I think, oh, hitting the camera mount. Um, I think another thing with this kit too is, I really like, it's not over-engineered, there's detail where you can see it, and then, you know, stuff you're not going to see there, like ton, put tons of plastic in there, you know, useless points, parts and stuff, so it does look like a really fun build, and I'm really excited to get going on this one. So. Yeah, so sorry I kind of um, doing this rush for a second time. Like I said, the camera, I didn't hit record on the first time I did this, but who <laughs> Anyway, so hope you enjoyed watching this one, and if so, I'll see you next time. Bye.